fine, if you have no motivation, step back. I was at an important competition that could determine the promotion of my boss who had always supported me. However, just when things were about to start, the computer broke down. This presentation required a speech in English. Even though everyone knew the content by heart, speaking in English without a script was a different story. While my boss frantically tried to restart the computer, saying, I'm terribly sorry. Just a moment, please, the person in charge stood up. Irritated. I don't have time for a company that can't even manage a proper presentation. My boss looked dejected. This couldn't go on. Although I was considered a lazy employee, I decided to take action in this emergency. I'll do it. I stepped up to the stage. The attendees looked at me with disbelief, but as soon as I started speaking, I captured everyone's attention. This was the moment my stagnant life began to change significantly. My name is John, 35 years old. I work for a travel agency. Our company plans package tours both domestically and internationally, with a diverse range of clients and colleagues. One of the great things about this job is that I can learn about foreign cultures while staying in the country. Despite working at such a stimulating and exciting company, I wasn't particularly ambitious. Of course, the job was enjoyable and I found it stimulating, but I was content with maintaining the status quo. My colleagues were steadily climbing the corporate ladder. Some had even become assistant managers, which was genuinely something to be happy about, though I didn't feel envious. I knew there was gossip about me, as I hadn't taken any promotion exams and stayed in my current position without caring about others' opinions. Some younger employees didn't know me well and speculated that I remained a regular employee because I was incompetent or unmotivated. Although it wasn't pleasant, it was true that I remained a regular employee. I pretended not to hear the gossip and didn't bother correcting them. Despite this, the company was meaningful to me. In April, during the period of personnel changes, new members joined our workplace from another branch. Among them, a standout was Lisa. Lisa transferred from a store in a neighboring prefecture and was an exceptionally beautiful woman and a competent superior who handled foreign clients. She treated everyone equally and was flawless in every way. She had been dispatched to our branch as a candidate for the store manager position. It seemed she was assigned here with a promotion in mind. One day, I found an error while checking documents. The hotel name and address used for a tour couldn't be found on the website. Although it was listed on the internal server, I couldn't find it. Upon checking the hotel company's website, I found that they had recently relocated. Since Lisa had created the proposal, I quietly brought the documents to her. Lisa, about this hotel. After blinking in surprise, she searched for the same page to confirm. You're right. Thanks for noticing. No problem, I'll update the internal list later. Please do. Now, what should we do about the replacement hotel? The new location is too far. How about this one? She opened the website of another hotel and showed it to me. As we looked at the computer together, I pointed out a detail that caught my eye. This place might not fit the tour concept. The luxury focus seems a bit too much. You're right. Then, how about this one? This hotel seems good. They also have a three-month discount campaign, and it'll be a plus. You're right, thanks for noticing. Lisa paused and turned to me. With an even more surprised expression, she tilted her head. John, were you just having a normal conversation with me? Ha! Huh? Yes. Were you following my explanation? I nodded honestly, not remembering discussing anything particularly difficult. It was just a hotel search. But all the websites were in the local language, right? Yes. And yet you understood them and noticed various things. It's just part of the job. I somewhat understood what Lisa was getting at. These days, few people are excessively praised for reading English websites fluently. Especially in a travel agency like ours. However, all the websites we were looking at were in French. So, you can read French, John. I majored in it in college, but I can only read it. It's nothing special. Really? This website had quite a few tricky expressions, though. You can read it too, right? Anyway, how should we revise the proposal? Should I handle it? Oh, yes. Could you please? 
Got it. I bowed and quickly returned to my desk. Lisa seemed like she was about to say something but was approached by another employee, so she couldn't pursue it further. Later, our branch decided to participate in a competition. In this company, not only does the headquarters management participate in competitions, but branch employees can also submit and pitch their plans. Lisa was chosen to lead the project for our branch. Naturally, it would significantly impact her career advancement. I was included in the project team. Probably because my ability to read French had been revealed during our previous interaction. I didn't think I would be much help, but requesting to be removed from the team would only make me stand out negatively. Since this competition wasn't about a tour in France, I didn't expect to have major tasks. I resigned myself to attending the internal meetings for the competition. One day, there was a business trip related to the competition. Since Lisa was still suspicious of me, she had me accompany her. Reluctantly arriving at the client's company's waiting room, I encountered a familiar face in the lobby. Hey, John, is that you? Chris. The man in a luxurious suit was a senior colleague from my previous job at a rival company. Chris greeted Lisa and me with a smile. What a coincidence, are you here for sales too, John? Yes. I'm glad to see you're doing well. Yeah, but it was tough after you left, you know? Ah. Not blaming you or anything. You were a big help, John. Are things going well at your current job? Yes, thanks to you. Good to hear. If you ever need anything, you're always welcome to come back. Everyone would be happy to have you. Thank you. Trying not to let my face twitch, I gave a neutral response to Chris's words. You're here as well. So does this mean your company is also participating in the Sakura Group competition? Yes. Well, a strong rival is troublesome. Chris said playfully before being called away by his contact. Lisa looked at me curiously as I relaxed. Was that man from your previous company, John? Yes, he was a senior colleague. I see. He seemed to rely on you quite a bit. Probably. I realized my tone was a bit sharp and quickly fell silent. Lisa seemed to be trying to decipher my words, but I continued to evade the subject. The meeting with our client went well that day, and upon returning to the office, Lisa dove into preparations for the competition. Although she was my superior, she wasn't much older than me. Yet, she was entrusted with such significant responsibilities and strived to meet expectations. It was intriguing. Sure, a promotion would mean a higher salary and better evaluation. But she was already in a high position. I couldn't understand the benefit of her relentless efforts. Was it a strong sense of responsibility or simply enjoyment? Either way, her actions were beyond my understanding. I had often seen other employees swamped with work and deadlines, but Lisa already had everything, respect, wealth. What motivated her continued to puzzle me. Uh, Lisa? I called out to Lisa, since she was still working past closing time. What's up? It's past closing time. She looked around in surprise. It seemed she hadn't been keeping track of the time. I hadn't noticed. Thank you. Are you heading home, John? Well, there's something I want to ask you. Something to ask? I hope it's not rude, but how can you put in so much effort? I mean, you don't have to be the one doing this competition. You have other work too. You'd still get promoted without doing all this, right? Well, Lisa pulled out the chair next to her. It seemed she wanted me to sit. When I did, she showed me her personal smartphone. It was filled with photos of a little girl and what appeared to be her parents. This is me. Really? My parents loved to travel and took me to many places. Indeed, the backgrounds of the photos varied greatly. Expansive landscapes, historical buildings, even some rare animals. I also traveled with relatives and with friends when I was a student. And I still travel a lot now. All these memories are precious to me. They all look like wonderful memories. Yes, traveling is very enjoyable. So, I took this job to help people enjoy their trips even more than they expected. My hard work isn't just for promotion or recognition, it's to make travel more enjoyable for others. For that? Yes. 
Of course, having a higher position helps me to achieve my goals. It makes it easier to get approval for plans, right? Lisa smiled and showed me her partially completed materials. They prominently featured a beautiful sea and boats. Travel should be enjoyed. Just imagining people having a great time on my tours makes me happy. She spoke with sparkling eyes, showing no sign of fatigue. She took pride in her work. I, too. Hmm. I also love traveling. I'm sure people will enjoy the tour you planned. Now that you mention it, and I'm feeling motivated. Lisa said, rolling up her sleeves and turning back to her computer. When I offered to help, she showed me the competition script written in English. I'm wondering how to convey my key points. Can I ask for your advice? Sure. I think this part could be softened. It might be clear to a Japanese audience. But it could be hard for people from other countries to understand. How about this? Should I change this part too? Yes, that makes sense. And so, we both lost track of time and ended up working late. For someone like me, who usually aimed to avoid overworking, this was the first time I had been so engrossed in a task. It's needless to say that Lisa had influenced me, and I realized I could broaden my perspective and look beyond my immediate tasks. Finally, the day of the competition arrived. We were the fifth out of five companies to present. Despite the ongoing tension, Lisa calmly waited for her turn, and even learned from the other presentations. Following her lead, I also paid attention to the presentations. When Lisa's turn came, she stepped up to the stage and placed her laptop on the desk. We waited for our company logo to appear on the white screen, but even after a minute, nothing happened. On stage, Lisa frantically typed on the keyboard. I apologize, please give us a moment. Our senior colleague, Emma, went to check on Lisa. Lisa, what's wrong? The laptop isn't working. It was fine just a moment ago. I'm trying to reboot it. It won't turn on. Can someone get the backup laptop? Holding Lisa's belongings, I rushed to bring the backup laptop to the stage. However, it wouldn't turn on either. We had already confirmed it was charged. It didn't seem to be a power issue. We should go back to the office and get another one. In my panic, I blurted out such a suggestion. Emma immediately dismissed it, knowing it was impossible to make it in time, but even the time spent on this exchange was precious. Lisa didn't have a printed copy of her script, it was all stored on her laptop. Even if she had printed it, presenting a tour without visuals on the screen wouldn't convey anything. Is everything okay? The host approached us with a worried look. Explaining that our laptop was malfunctioning, a man seated in the front row, likely a company executive, spoke up irritably. Enough already. If you're not prepared, step down. I apologize. Please give us a little more time. We don't have time for a company that can't even manage a proper presentation. There are four other companies here. Right, Mr. White? The man asked the foreigner sitting next to him. The foreigner seemed to understand Japanese and placed his documents on the table with a frown. In that moment, I recalled Lisa's efforts over the past few months. Her passion for making people enjoy her tours. The countless hours she spent perfecting her plan. She had even gone on site to ensure every detail was accurate. She can't let it end like this. I entrusted the laptop to Emma and Lisa and stepped onto the stage. The attendees were chatting or looking at their smartphones. Ignoring them, I took a deep breath. Don't worry, I have memorized all of Lisa's script. Excuse me, it seems our laptop is nervous in front of all of you. But rest assured, I can speak better than the laptop. Please take a look at the first page of the handout. As I spoke, the man who had been irritated earlier looked up sharply. Mr. White and the other employees were also looking at me. They turned their attention to the handout as instructed. It seemed my English was understood correctly. Where would you like to go on a trip? Of course, to a fun place, right? When I continued in French, someone sitting at the edge couldn't help but speak up. You speak French? I responded in French. Yes, though it's very rudimentary. But how's that for some Japanese humility? Perfect. I'm glad. Maybe I should consider being a tour conductor as well. That would be great. 
The participants who didn't understand French looked puzzled. I apologized in English and then switched to the Chinese I had recently learned. I was just asking him to grade my French. It seems I passed. When my Chinese gets good enough, I'll be pitching to our Chinese clients next. The name tag of the person I made eye contact with indicated he was Chinese. As expected, he responded to my Chinese. I couldn't see Lisa and the others standing next to me, but employees from other companies, including Chris, were wide-eyed. Since I didn't speak Chinese back when I was at the previous company, Chris was likely surprised too. All right, enough chit-chat, let's start the presentation. Switching back to English, I continued the presentation, interspersing it with occasional jokes to ease the tension of the participants. I visualized the slides and shared some fun facts about the tourist spots. Finishing right on time, I concluded my speech and bowed. The attendees gave a hearty round of applause, as if they had just witnessed a performance. I had conveyed everything necessary. Leaving the rest to Lisa, I stepped down from the stage. We would be informed of the competition results later, but as we were leaving, Mr. White personally approached me. Your speech was very entertaining. I hope you can bring as much joy to the tours we arrange. He said in English, so I translated for the employees who didn't understand, and they jumped with excitement. After managing to succeed, we returned to the office, where Lisa called me to the meeting room. John. I don't know how to thank you. She looked quite downcast. Despite being fully prepared, the laptop failure had been unexpected. It was only natural to feel frustrated. We're teammates, so it's only natural to cover for each other. I'm so useless. I talked big, but in the end, I had to rely on you. Both laptops malfunctioning was beyond our control. They still aren't working. Even after returning from the competition, both of Lisa's laptops remained unresponsive. We had handed them to the IT department to investigate the cause. I should have prepared the script and slides better. I feel like a rookie making such mistakes. Compared to that, your quick thinking was amazing. I didn't expect you to remember the script. We created it together, so to some extent. That wasn't all, you also used multiple languages so fluently. I didn't know you could speak French. Yes. I relied on you for this competition. I need to be able to handle things better on my own. Lisa gave a self-deprecating smile, and it felt off to me. Aren't you going to say, let's keep working together? What do you mean? I mean, not to boast, but if you utilize me well, we might win future competitions too. That wouldn't mean anything. Lisa stated firmly. How can I confidently offer tours if I don't win the competition on my own merits? It's only when it's my own achievement that I can truly be proud, Lisa said. Her words struck me like lightning. She was different from all the other colleagues and bosses I'd encountered. Actually, there are things I've been avoiding to tell. Like why you're so good with languages. Yes. Will you tell me? Yes. Since you're different from the others, Lisa. I began to explain that I had traveled around the world from a young age due to my parents' jobs. Most of the countries were English-speaking, so both Japanese and English were equally part of my life. When my parents' work settled down and we moved permanently to Japan, I was shocked. None of the kids my age could speak English fluently. They struggled with reading and writing. I couldn't understand why something so simple was so difficult for them, and I openly used English as naturally as I would in any other country. School textbooks felt like children's books to me. Naturally, my classmates relied on me. They asked for help with homework and study tips before tests. As a child, I enjoyed sharing my knowledge and happily helped them. Over time, I came to accept being used by others. It wasn't until college, during a group project in my French major, that I realized something was off. The group pushed all the responsibilities, leadership, creating materials, and even the presentation onto me. When I questioned why I had to do everything, they all said the same thing. Because John can speak English, they said. I thought English and French were different, but they didn't see it that way. They believed that anyone who could speak English was inherently good at all languages. Though it was a class to improve our language skills, they chose the easy way to get good grades. As a result, our achievements were shared equally among the team, and my contributions became others as well. I realized then that I was being used. 
Still, since it was just a student project and not very difficult, I thought it was more efficient for me to take charge. In that state, I got a job at a travel agency. By then, I had also learned French, so I was valued as a trilingual speaker of Japanese, English, and French. At first, I was genuinely happy to use my skills and be given a lot of work, but it didn't last long. It started about a year after I joined, with a work request from my direct senior, Chris. He asked me to write a proposal because he wasn't good at English, and since he had taken care of me since I joined, I gladly accepted. Chris was satisfied with the proposal and then asked me to help with another task. Helping him alongside my own work was tough and involved a lot of overtime. Still, the joy of seeing our project approved and actually turned into a product was incomparable, so I didn't complain and kept working. The situation worsened a year later, when I could finally look at the company as a whole. Chris got promoted to section chief, and I was still working under him. As I was being given more and more tasks, I decided to use past documents as reference materials. And I was stunned when I looked at the approved project proposals. The report for a project I had worked on about 90% by myself only had Chris's name on it. I had heard that his performance wasn't good before I joined. Unable to believe it, I checked other documents and proposals and found that my name was replaced by Chris's everywhere. Since Chris was the one submitting the final documents to our boss, he was indeed the project leader. However, all the ideas, research, and proposals were mine. Besides, Chris couldn't create the English documents. I decided to confront Chris and looked for him while he was away from his desk. I found him talking to our department head, Alex, in the smoking area. Chris, the Paris tour you submitted this morning was great, Alex said. The project Alex was talking about was also mine. Yes, since I have a contact there, I could gather a lot of information, Chris replied. His words were exactly what I had said. That tour was created with input from my father's colleague, who helped me a lot as a child. Excuse me. I couldn't hold back and stepped in front of them. Chris looked a bit flustered but quickly regained his composure. John, what's up? Are you here for a smoke too? No, I have a question for Chris. The Paris tour project you were just discussing, that was my idea, right? Yes, John did help a lot. Thanks for that. Helped? That's an understatement. It was far more than that but Alex nodded in agreement with Chris's words. Chris's guidance has been invaluable. Is that so? Don't praise me too much, I'll get a big head, Chris said, smiling. I managed to interrupt their friendly exchange. Not just that, but the Hokkaido tour last time, and the North America plan before that, those were my projects too. That's not the right attitude. Alex suddenly reprimanded me. Work isn't done alone. We achieve results by working together as a team. Trying to take all the credit is inadmirable. I was stunned by Alex's words. Did he say this without knowing anything? But... Chris was promoted because of those successful projects. He is the manager, so he is being recognized for leading the team. Alex added that I should learn from Chris and not be so self-centered, and it made me speechless. No, I didn't want to say anything more. With supervisors like them, no matter how hard I worked, they would only use me for their benefit. My achievements would be absorbed into someone else's recognition. My distrust of those relying on my abilities and the evaluators reached its peak. And within less than a month, I quit that company. Fortunately, thanks to my language skills, I quickly found a new job. That's the company I'm with now. No one like them would steal my achievements in this company. Of course, I kept my language skills under wraps and didn't give my all to my work. If my efforts only serve to promote someone else, it's pointless to try hard. That's what I thought, but... Watching Lisa, I realized how rewarding it is to be recognized for my effort. Initially, I wanted to do work that made people happy. But somewhere along the line, I started caring only about recognition. Leaving that company was the right decision. Lisa said, a bit angrily. Of course, enjoying work is important, but if your efforts aren't properly recognized, it's natural to lose motivation. That Alex is a poor evaluator. But it's also my fault. If I had communicated better with them, things might not have turned out like that. Then, you can apply that reflection here. No one here will steal your credit, not while I'm around. 
What a reassuring statement. Honestly, I enjoyed preparing for this competition. Watching you work so hard was inspiring. I'm thrilled to hear that as your supervisor. John, you don't need to suppress your feelings anymore. Don't hold back, do what you want. Just then, Lisa's phone rang. Excuse me for a moment. She said, pulling her phone from her pocket. This is Lisa from Miyama Tours. Yes. What? Really? I'll be there right away. After ending the call, Lisa grabbed my arm and hurried out of the conference room. What happened? They found the cause of the computer trouble. We need to get back to the competition venue. Was the problem at the venue? More like with the participants. What I heard on the way was shocking. It turned out that Chris was the one who caused Lisa's computer issues. After his presentation, he had placed a powerful magnet under the desk that damaged the equipment. He was caught by an employee from Sakura Group while trying to retrieve it. When Lisa and I arrived, the scene in the conference room had completely changed. There was Chris, looking dejected, with my former company's supervisor. And members of the Sakura Group. An official approached us and explained the situation. Chris had been caught and confessed to sabotaging us. His supervisor was called in, the situation was explained again, and here we were. Lisa is here. The official said, leading us to Chris and the others. Is it true? It's John's fault. Gone was his meek demeanor, he pointed at me and yelled. Because he betrayed us and left the company, my efficiency dropped, our performance stagnated, and his departure caused us so much trouble. We would have won this competition if there weren't you. So you sabotaged John out of fear of his abilities. Lisa said, and her voice was filled with anger I had never heard before. Does trampling on others' efforts make you happy? Maybe you don't even care since you've done it so many times before. What do you even know about me? I know enough to see that you can't accomplish anything without John. You took credit for his work, who is the real betrayer here? John worked under my direction. I didn't take credit. Isn't what you did proof enough? Lisa handed her business card to Chris's supervisor. This is who I am. I expect we will meet in court, so please keep this in mind. Court? What do you mean? It's obvious. Interfering with our business and damaging property, a lawsuit is the natural consequence. Her words were so reasonable that no one could argue back. Eventually, it led to a civil lawsuit. Chris was dismissed for violating multiple conduct codes. While the trial is ongoing, finding a new job is out of the question for him. Even after the trial, I doubt he will easily reintegrate into society. As expected, I heard through the grapevine that Chris is now living a meager life with considerable debt. On the other hand, Lisa's success in the competition and her previous achievements earned her a promotion. I was also recognized for my significant contributions and got promoted. Naturally, my language skills were revealed, and both of us were assigned to work overseas. Researching on-site will be so much easier. Lisa said happily. Now, we are living together at our new posting. I have come to deeply respect Lisa, who changed my life so dramatically, and over time, I have developed feelings for her as a woman. She also said she was drawn to my dedication. I used to think that effort was pointless, but there are people who properly recognize it. I regret not opening up sooner and harboring prejudices, but I didn't have the courage. From now on, I'll trust people more and strive to fairly evaluate my subordinates. I'm sure things will go well at this company.